and welcome back to some more Tower Tactics Liberation, and in this episode I am going to tell you all about this day I've had. Simon seems happy. So, last night at about 4 in the morning or so, you know, somewhere around 4 a.m., I decided to check out on Facebook, <laughs> and it turns out that my local game store was actually is having a pre-release event today. Starting at, like, noon. <laughs> which means I have to be on the bus by 11. Which means I have to leave probably about, you know, 10.50ish. Which means I have to be up by, like, 10. Um. That's good. So. Um. Yeah, I know, right? Like. No, that's not what I'm going goddammit about. So, like, pre-release for the new set. A uh, new set, Bloomborough. Bunch of cute little animals and stuff. That's the entire premise of the set. It's cute. It's fun. There's animals. I never really looked at any of the... Oh, how to draft this set properly stuff, whatever. I don't really care about that. I just figured, I'll go in, play some animals, probably won't do well. Might buy some new cards I was looking at getting while I'm there anyway. No sense buying them online and waiting for shipping if I could just buy them at my local game store for like the same price anyway. Without yeah. having to pay shipping or wait for shipping. So I get there. I, you know, I wake up at like 9. Not because I set an alarm for 9. I set my alarm for later than that. I just happened to wake up at 9. Get all ready, get going, blah blah blah. Everything is fine. On my way there, after getting off the bus, I realize, hey, I walk literally right past a pet store. I've been looking to get something for Cinnamon. Yeah, you, Cinnamon. Oh, this has to just taunt me like that. God, Ark! No, you should take a look at mine see what I'm trying to do here. Okay, Azura, what is Azura trying to do today? Okay, so I've got this statue I'm trying to put in my truck. You're trying to put what a statue I... in your trunk, got it. Wait, where's the other one? As soon as Here's you stop the... looking at them, they're going to run away. Okay. Oh, it's literally right here. It okay. looked like a bush. So you're trying to get two giant statues. One of them seems to be like a Buddha statue. Uh, they have weird collision. And be because of the fact I can't rotate them. Uh oh, you can't. Like, I can't... So it's like, it should be possible to get them both in, if you could rotate them in properly, but you cannot. Yeah. So, right, I was saying, uh, because after I get off the bus, I was right next to a pet store, I figured, you know what, I'll get a thing for cinnamon that I've been meaning to get them for a little while now. Simon uh, says thanks for it. Simon is very grateful for his new toy. I got him a Kong. You know, the little, like, red rubber thing you put, like, treats in and give to dogs. Yeah, I asked if there was one for cats, and the person was like, uh, I don't know. And just gave me, like, a small, like, regular dog one. It's like, well, it's not the one that says it can't be used by cats. It's like, you know what? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Yeah, I finally got home, put some catnip in it, put a few treats in, and now Simon's being all extra snuggly. Simon had some of the catnip. I just... If only I could just Look get this... One of, like, if I could get them both to balance <laughs> or something. Here, you know what? Shaking butt. So anyway, I show up at the draft... Uh, it's like, at the pre-release event, it's all like, yeah, I'm ready to do this. And the guy's like, okay, cool, just like, use the app and sign in. It's like, oh, right, sure, I've got that app, I'll do that. I, you know, put in the code, try to sign in. And the guy just kind of like, looks at his computer, looks at me, looks back at his computer, 
looks back at me. It's like, did you change your last name? I'm just there like, I mean, I have changed my last name. Not recently, but I have in the past. Uh, yeah, something weird happened with the app. It didn't work. Oh. I don't know what it was. It Sometimes it's just borked and... So he's like, okay, I'll just sign you up manually. I'll just have to tell you who you're paired up against because you can't use the app to check. It's like, okay, cool, thank you. Um, so, you know, get get a seat, get my cards, and the way pre-release works is you get six booster packs and, like, a special promo card. Booster packs generally have one rare per pack, plus the promo card is, I think, always a rare, so... The person is supposed to have seven rares in their total pool. Uh, sometimes a pack can have a foil, and the foil could be a rare, so there is a chance of getting more than seven, but usually it's seven. Yeah, I had ten rares in my pool. Wow. Uh, I was able to put five of them into a deck to uh, try to work in... <laughs> Just look at the deck and like this isn't great i'm trying to do like too many different things at once nothing's really like cohesive like i have this squirrel thing that cares about food but i don't have like i have like two cards that give me foods like it's not a great deck but like whatever it's my pre-release deck there to have fun this is probably gonna be fun sit down my <laughs> get paired up for my first game I have to mulligan down to five because I can't get enough lands in my opening hand. It's like, yeah, this is a bad sign. It's like, why did I decide to make this deck? Why does... Like, whatever. I'm at five. It's best of three. Even if I lose the first game, it's fine. Uh, no. I wind up stomping on the first game because turns out that little scroll thing I had that cares about foods is part of a kind of infinite combo Why, that I managed to get in my draft pool. In my pre-release pool. Because it has an ability of whenever you sacrifice a food, make a squirrel token. 1-1 one, one squirrel creature token. But I had another creature that was all other creatures on the board are also foods. So they're also artifacts, and they also have the ability to pay to tap and sacrifice, gain three life. So with both of them out, any other creatures I had out, I could basically just pay to tap, sack it. I make a squirrel token. I put two plus counters on the cat, and I gain three life. You know what that squirrel token is? It's another creature I control. So wait until like my next turn, whatever. When it no longer has summoning sickness, pay two mana, tap, sacrifice a squirrel, make a squirrel, make my cat bigger, gain three life. So I had like these two squirrel tokens going on for the longest time, just sit there, it's like, yeah, I'll block, I'll sack both of them, gain six life, make two more, make... The cat got up to 60 power. It was a 60-60 by the time that game was over. Wow. It started at six. <laughs> And it's like, okay, wow, that was a great game one. Also took like half the round. It's like, okay, sure. Uh, game two. Keep an open hand. It's like, okay, it's not very good. It's like two lands. But it's like, this is game two of three and I've already won the first one. If I lose this one, I get to go first on game three, get a better hand, blah, blah, blah. You know, also play more games. That game got insanely close. Like, I was able to get... I, I feel like I got, like, the same combo. I'm not sure. I had the same combo out for a little bit before they got rid of my cat. And I was, like, struggling on life. I had four life. They had five power worth of flyers. Well, hi there. They attacked me for five. Bring themselves up to 15 life. And it's like, yeah, I'll just attack you for game. That's it. And I just had, like, the squirrel thing left and, like, two, like, squirrel tokens. And, like, that was it. But I managed to cast a spell that gave me two life, so I would live on one. <laughs> no, they brought themselves up to 17. I brought them down to 15. 
I survived on one. I go to my turn. Activate a bunch of shenanigans all at once. Uh, the squirrel leader can also pump my other squirrels by paying two life and either sacrificing a food or exiling three cards from my graveyard. And it gives, and it has menace and gives all my other squirrels menace. So they had like a 1-1 one, one rabbit for their only blocker. And I was able to swing for like exactly 15 while I was at one life. <laughs> huh. Like I barely killed them. <laughs> But, yeah, like, at some point, it just kind of started feeling like that deck would not allow me to lose a game. Like, I had multiple games where I started with a one land opening hand, and I still managed to win. I'm not entirely sure how, but... Like, I just keep drawing lands until I was good, then draw stuff to use with all of those lands I now could have. So, also something I noticed while I was opening up my pool and checking out all my rares, I pulled enough value out of the rares to pay for like the $60 entry fee. So basically I got to go to the pre-release for free if I could sell those cards or get proper value out of them. So. I went 2-0 every match. I won eight games in a row. Jesus. I absolutely crushed the pre-release. Like... There were multiple hands that I, like, look at my opening hand, I'm like, I'm not going to win this. It's like, one land. <laughs> and like some card draw effects that cost some mana and then I just go it's like okay fine I'm on the play anyway draw land draw land draw land okay I'm good <laughs> so yeah I would like, of course I don't want to be like arrogant or anything but I did absolutely crush the competition, and it was kind of sweet. <laughs> Sounds like you had a lot of fun. And then after the event, I was able to trade my cards in, some of the cards I got, with some other people for some cards I've been looking for, for my own commander decks. So I was able to, like, yeah, I was able to go play some games of Magic with a killer deck that did not allow me to lose a game. Uh, meet some people, be friendly and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> and then I got about $60 for, for paying $60 entry, I got about $60 worth of cards for my decks, so that's cool. Nice. Oh, no. So, also, I remember uh, we go to like sit down for like, I think like round two or something. And these are like, how do we describe this? They're basically like folding tables. You know those things? Like they bring out for like the easy yeah. to set up and take down sort of things. Uh -huh. Eight feet long. Sure. So I'm sitting there, and there's another girl sitting, like, two seats away from me at the same table. And we're just, you know, casually, like, waiting for game two to start, and she mentions, so, like, oh yeah, I've got a name that's, like, really easy to find. <laughs> on, it's like, I've got a name that's really easy to find on the pairings. It's like, what? It's like, oh yeah, it's, like, super easy for people to know who I am. It's like... What is your, is your listed name like brunette or something like, what is your name that's so easy to find? And then she shows me, 
Uh, do you want to guess what her name is? What? Here's a hint. I've already given you a clue. I, I have no idea, Claire. What was the name? Yeah. That. The name is what? No, the name is Claire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to sign up, the game store owner had asked me if I had changed my last name because there was another Claire who had signed up. So like, she's just like, oh yeah, I'm Claire. And then I go and just shake her hands like, hi, Claire. I'm Claire. <laughs> What's that you were saying about having a, so, a name that's super easy to uh, tell who you are? Yeah, I had a good day. Got a bunch of new cards and stuff. Got to show off my trade finder. Turns out that a card that I had just sitting in my trade finder that I thought was like maybe a $5 card is actually like a $35 card, so I got to trade it for something I really wanted. Nice. Yeah, that is really nice when that happens. Okay, that's there. That's there. Your game is loud. <laughs> A bit. Yeah, you need to be able to hear all those thieves. Whoa. I don't know why, I just got flashbacks to a game I played years ago? It wasn't even like a really good game. It's gonna turn it back down just a little well, bit. Luckily, the cops are don't get too deep up to this. Open up these storage mechanics. Fantasy, there's a helicopter! No, Claire's the other girl! What the f- when... But yeah, I can't wait until my uh, e-bike gets here. And I can go on uh, trips like that to the L LGS without having to go on the uh, city bus.
How dare you? Yeah, I really thought that it would take basically a whole episode to talk about what I did with my day, but... No, I mean, I went to pre-release, I did awesome, got some nice trades in. Got my trade binder here, got my CDH deck here next to me as well, because I wanted to put the new cards in. I should really sort out my trade binder a little bit better, but like, whatevs. Got, a paint. got like $700 cards next to like $20 cards next to like $2 cards, like... Maybe I could try sorting by like a budget or something at some point. Oh yeah, and in addition to all of the uh, the stuff I did wind up trading away from the pool, I still have like this ten dollar card that I wasn't able to trade. So I still have more I could potentially trade on a future trip. Golem. Is that even actually worth anything? Here's a card that. Really? That's a card? The card that I thought was worth like $80 turns out it was like 30 or so, so I was able to trade for it and it's really nice because the uh, I really like the pretty art instead of trying to continue using the proxy that I was using. My wall of arcane signets. What are the extra? Sorry, he has all these extra. Who's a what? I can't hear you, it's too dark. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you over the smell. Can you turn down the radio a little? Oof. Damage. Now, one thing that sucks is I've got there's a bunch of large items that I'm not going to be able to take. Oh, no. Well, it's more just a matter of because there's just too many, and you already saw how I started with getting two of them in my field. <laughs> It was a cop? It was a guard. How dare! Tracuse! And all that stuff. So I got eight new cards I potentially actually wanted for decks. Nice shiny Coslex command for my artifact decks. And Echoing Deeps, which is de which definitely has potential for something. A Lotus Bloom, which didn't actually want for a deck, but I really like Lotus Bloom. <laughs> X-Ray Turdy for my Kindred deck. A Bird Dragon. And a Mockingbird. The Mockingbird is for my clone deck, by the way.
so I am so starving so I have to eat today. <laughs> Why did you get? Okay, also I brought my tablet when I went out, so I got to beat some sword. Nice. Yeah, it was enjoyable. It was nice. Yeah. Anyway, a thing was brought up recently, and <laughs> I'm curious if you remember it. Um, I'm curious if we could get a conversation about it. Do you remember the TV guide? Like, what do you mean by the TV guide? Like, just like the. Like the little book that used to be like sent out or whatever and you could look through it and see what was going to be on TV. I mean, I remember TV, the, the TV guides that were like, you know, in the newspapers and stuff. Yeah, wasn't there like a little book that they, I don't know if you'd have to buy it or if they'd send it out or what? Or I tell you, it's like, oh, uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. is Survivor. It's like... You'd have to read that to know, like, when the shows are going to be on. Get out! Damn. Damn it. Uh, vaguely. Huh. <laughs> I remember. It I remember that being in the newspaper. That's all. Why? Oh, because there was a thing that someone had brought up recently. Uh. Okay. So just like that was an that was actually a thing, right? Yeah. Sure, all battles. I mean, I mean, yes, it was a thing. What did you want to talk about it? No, I guess that was about it. Yeah, just... 
information that's yeah. like, no, yeah, that was an actual thing <laughs> that okay. people used to get and stuff. I more strongly remember going to like channel like two or three or something, and there'd be like the scrolling thing that tells you like what's on on the channels. Yep, I remember that as well. So be like, come on, that... come on, hurry up, channel thirty-two, let's go. I don't know why, but I remember being in like a hotel rooms, and the TV would be on, but it'd be like just on that channel and just sit there for like ever because no one ever knows what they want to watch, but they want to have some background noise, so they just put, just turn it on. It defaults to that, and they just leave it sitting there while it plays like infomercials or something. Wow, sounds like you visited a lot of terrible. Uh, oh, sorry, hotels with some very terrible, boring people. Yeah, my parents. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I said. I mean, I think I did that as well at one point. I went to had a hotel because I was going to a convention or something. Turned on the TV. And then just, like... Turn on TV. There's noise. Like, well, I don't know what I want to watch. Let's go and check this out. And before I could see anything good being on, I get distracted, like, by my phone or whatever. And before I know it, it's been, like, two hours. I've just been on the infomercial page. Because there's nothing good on. Might as well just listen to people trying to sell me stuff. There we go. Brrr. I was trying to remember the game that we were playing recently, and I kept wanting to think of it as, you know, Rune Legacy. That's that's the game we were playing, right? Rune Legacy. It's like. Yeah, I really don't think that that's what it was. Yeah, no, Streets of Rogue. I don't know why my brain was auto-correcting to Rune Legacy. I guess it's in Withdrawal, because <laughs> I missed a Rune Factory episode or something. Oh. It's like, no, everything has to be runes. Oh, this part is going to suck. My invisibility turned off at the exact wrong time. I had invisibility on? Cheats. That is incredibly frustrating. Ghost all the way. And this ghost I found. Yeah, that's a spirit. And I lost the run. That's good. I talked about my day. 
I'm hungry, okay? I, well, I haven't eaten yet. I want to put cards into this deck. Look at pretty... Look at pretty, pretty cards. Quite pretty, pretty cards. Okay. Uh, Damn. Get away from me! What? <laughs> the planar nexus land that's all non-basic land types. Foslex command that... Oh, no, that is also a kindred card. Might want for the kindred deck, but this is like $18? Ooh. Mockingbird! X and a blue for a flying 1-1. One -one. You may have it enter as a copy of any creature on the battlefield with mana value less than or equal to the amount of mana spent to cast a Mockingbird. Except it's a bird in addition to its other types and it has flying. Oh, that's right, I didn't, I didn't really want Mockingbird. So if I try to copy something with it, I actually have to pay mana into it. The cost reductions of rarity don't help it. Yeah, whenever three mana for an extra rarity is fun. If I can get knowledge, they rarity out first. Or just not give up the less roll. Or, or use that discount to use the uh, wicker picker to put a sticker on the Mockingbird rarity. Another short episode of this, but you know what? Ugh. It's been a long day.